Good morning, everybody. It's Christina Dennis, the Transformational Self-Empowerment Master. And uh, I am on my way to an event. So I've got my spiffy laser on and my hair in a power. Well, really, it's just dirty. So I have it up. <laughs> and I wanted to come in and talk a little bit about um, the process of transforming. Uh, when things don't go as you hoped, when you behave, when I behave in a way that I wish I hadn't. And uh, I want to share a little bit about something that happened yesterday. And hopefully I can tie it back in with an activity step today to clean up uh, my side of the street and then move in tomorrow uh, and share about that as well. First of all, I'm going to say I don't want to do this. I don't want to share this story and I don't want to do what is required of me in order to uh, behave the way I want to behave, but it is necessary. And uh, being brave uh, means that you're vulnerable. Being brave means that you are able to see your imperfections and share them with safe people. And uh, being brave means that I live an authentic, true life to myself. Now, you may have watched yesterday's video. I talked about having kind of a sharp dream uh, regarding my grandpa. Um, and I had seen him, and, and he died when I was 13, 14, and uh, his memories are fuzzy. What he looks like is fuzzy, but uh, there was somebody who walked by uh, a trade show that I was working, um, definitely a combination of all my past careers, and I you know, shouted out to him um, or to, went to discuss something with him, he turned around and gave me this disgusted look, and I froze. My voice was gone. And I could I wanted to scream and I couldn't. And I said, I've got to do some more work on that. And will I haven't got to it. So let me tell you how life collides when we're in these places. I, I was triggered yesterday morning. My nervous system was on alert. I uh, I did the things that I thought I needed to do, but I knew I was tired. I had gone to Phoenix. I have gone to Phoenix this week and came back. And yesterday I had a commitment that was about nine hours, and I was tired by the end of it. And I came across a new associate that I met, and his personality was and is um, one that's loud. And we we're in close proximity of each other, and his his interactions with me were jarring, and I'm in a nervous place at that point. And I knew I knew it was reading all over my face. And after about three or four loud claps, you know, right right there, I got triggered, and I said, "Please don't clap like that again. You're going to trigger my PTSD." And I I was I was angry. I'm going to be honest, I was angry. And his response was to turn around and say, what's wrong with you? And it wasn't, it wasn't a mean, what's wrong with you? I've shared the story a couple of times since then. And I've been a little more on leaning to the side of like, he said something terribly wrong. But I heard uh, a gentleman, um, Jim Rohn, who was a, a beautiful man. And I would listen to his tapes and sort that talked about overcoming, uh, you know, your fears, your courage, your, and he talked about how important language is, and it left an indelible, uh, an indelible uh, memory inside of me, and it really changed the words that I choose now very carefully, and I forget that not every word that somebody else speaks is so weighted, just because I take the time to think exactly, to say exactly what I'm thinking, I need to say, now everybody does that. Um, my my uh, partner says, you know, Chrissy, sometimes I just blurt and it doesn't mean more than what I said. And uh, I've learned to accept that because I know he's for me and he rarely does it. And, you know, we're in a safe, I'm in a safe relationship. And this person said, what's wrong with you? And he meant it like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I scared you. But I hated that question. And I said, that's a terrible way to ask a question. Boom. Now, do I think that he was correct in the way he was behaving after I had asked him several times to not be so loud right next to me while we're trying to work together and finish this project? Maybe, maybe not. Do I think that his personality is a, is a personal offense to me or he meant to try to trigger me? Maybe, maybe not. You know, I don't know him that well. Um, could I have set the boundary softer? Probably. Could I have taken care of myself by leaving uh, the vicinity and speaking to, uh, you know, a co uh, cohort um, and trying to pull him aside privately rather than uh, confront him? Yes, that I definitely could have done, but I didn't. And what resulted 
was uh, was a very tense few more hours. And now I may see him today. I need to clean that up. I need to pull him aside and say, I apologize for the tone I took. I apologize for um, for the you know the uh, assertiveness or you know I'm not even quite sure. I've got to think about it because I don't grovel either. And um, and I need to like really make sure that this is something that I want to do because perhaps he's not very safe. His behavior after that interaction, when I definitely tried to, you know, reassert uh, a discussion, a dialogue between us, um, kind of showed me that he was for sure not going to respond well to me anymore. So I'm going to work on that today. And what does that show um, about transforming? Well. The fact that I can think from a different perspective, the fact that I can realize that people are not put on this earth to affront me um, and that he probably didn't mean well, but at the same time, be aware that sometimes people are this way on purpose and sometimes they are not safe people. And I can clean up my part and be professional, but I do not need to become this person's friend or best friend. Um, I don't need to worry about what his opinion is of me after I've taken care of my side of the street. Um, I can work on giving him a little grace. I can work on taking care of myself prior to possibly running into him with some prayer, with some meditation, with some affirming thoughts so that I feel safer. I can um, ask for assistance. I believe it, you know, um, I have faith. I believe in a spiritual uh, spiritual situation on this earth, and I think that I can get some protection in that manner. Perhaps you're somebody who believes in, you know, karma or the universe. I'm not sure. But we all know that there's something bigger than us. I think most of us know that. And we're all working toward that, and that's what gives us comfort. So I can do that. I can do many things differently. But I know I don't want to spend several hours with this person uh, where I'm uncomfortable. And if it's still uh, still plaguing between us after I've taken care of um, what I needed to do, then I can let it be his issue and not mine. And that believe that leads me to believing that I have uh, I've transformed incredibly in this area. As I'll tell you, I used to be a lot more combative if I felt like someone was being aggressive. I used to be a, take it a lot more personally. If someone shortened my name, he said that, okay, Chris, on the way out, see you later, I would get very offended. Um, I felt like that was a way that people were trying to belittle me or make me small. And all of this stuff is a lot of energy that I don't need to put out in this world. I don't need to have it bother me for hours and hours. So I can only do what I've already said I'm going to do. And the rest will be up to him to a higher power of self source. Mine is God. That's who I call God. And uh, I'm sure it'll all be taken care of because I'm willing. I'm willing to be uh, uh, a grown up. I'm willing to accept my part and I'm willing to clean it up and move forward and not make a monster out of the interaction. He has a strong personality. I have a strong idea of the way we behave. And somewhere in the middle is probably the truth. So I hope that you take that information and look at parts of your life. Um, I hope that you can get to a place where you're not offended. Um, and uh, maybe being offended can be translated into having your feelings hurt or to feeling uncomfortable or to, you know, or not feeling safe. You know, all of these, all of these feelings that we bring into today and now, uh, generally, if they are of, uh, of that nature where we're feeling unsafe or uncomfortable or concerned or heart is pounding, you know, it's something to pay attention to. Like, okay, these are clues. Don't, don't tell yourself that those are, you know, not okay feelings. Have them, maybe not in uh, the face of somebody who isn't safe, maybe not in your workplace uh, or when you're, you know, being a professional, but make sure that you have someone to discuss it with. Make sure that you don't tell yourself it's not okay to have those feelings. It's okay to have them. What we have to do, what I have to do, is one, give myself grace about the situation and understanding that, you know, I was triggered yesterday morning when I woke up. I was tired. All of the circumstances that were there that would allow me to take something really personally and to feel like I had to uh, set a very hard boundary. 
um, my suspicions tell me that that would have been necessary even if I hadn't uh, snapped. But I need to clean up what I did so that I can behave the way I do. If you are in that place today, take that information, figure out where the source is, work on that. That's what you can do. Uh, don't put yourself in that position constantly because that's not okay. And it's okay to take a break and have a moment for yourself. So it's Friday, right? Yeah, it's Friday. And uh, I'm gonna go out to my vent with dirty hair that's up in a bun. I think it looks pretty cool from this side. And I noticed there's like gray came in even though I had my hair done. Oh well. And I am going to go be the best that I can be. And tonight when I get home, I'm gonna probably write about how the experience was today. And uh, I'll come in here tomorrow and share it. Hey, Liz. Um, I wanna thank everybody who has been watching my videos. I really appreci appreciate the support. I'd love to hear from you. If you wanna message me privately to discuss something publicly, I'm happy to do that too, because I think this is going to become a really powerful group of people that can support each other and we don't have to do it so publicly as I am willing to do it, but we can certainly do it. The other thing is that I'm posting these on YouTube. So if you have a friend or somebody that you would like to share this information with, and maybe they are not going to become part of the Facebook group that we have, um, please uh, refer them to Transformational Self-Empowerment um, channel on YouTube. You can get to it through my website, transformationalselfempowerment.com. That website also has a wonderful guidebook. It's about 20 pages. It's an easy read, and it gives us a really good outline of some of the work that I do privately with people and some of the mastermind classes that I hold. So here you go. Happy Friday to everybody who's out there, and I look forward to talking to you again. Take care.